Hello friends, here in this video we will see a problem on the design of shaft and for that purpose here we have the question. A shaft made up of mild steel is required to transmit 100 kilowatts at 300 rpm. The supported length of the shaft is 3 meters. It carries two pulleys each weighing 1500 newton supported at a distance of 1 meter from the ends respectively. Assuming safe value of stress as 60 megapascal, determine the diameter of the shaft. Now this is the question which we have on the design of shaft. Whatever is given here, I will write that in the form of data first. So here I am writing the data. Here it is given that a shaft is made up of mild steel which is the material of the shaft is required to transmit 100 kilowatts at 300 rpm. So power is 100 kilowatts which we can say that it is also equal to 100 into 10 raised to 3 watts and speed is given here 300 rpm next it is given that the supported length of the shaft is 3 meters so here I can explain the supported length by an example that the shaft is placed along its length and then it is supported on both the sides like this and this supported length of the shaft is 3 meter given this I can say it is point A and point B next it carries two pulleys each weighing 1500 Newton supported at a distance of 1 meter from the ends respectively so here it is given that this shaft it carries two pulleys and their weight is given that is weight of the pulley I'll denote it by W and that is equal to 1500 Newton so it means this shaft is going to carry two pulleys and they are one meter distance from each end next assuming safe value of stress as 60 megapascal so this is the value of safe stress given safe stress is equal to 60 megapascal that is 60 newton per mm square determine the diameter of the shaft so this is the question for us we have to find out how much would be the diameter of shaft so that I will denote it by capital D now as we have seen in this problem anywhere here it is not given that the shaft is hollow so I can say that the type of shaft here it is a solid shaft now here at both the ends the pulley are there their weight is 1500 newton on both the sides so now this is the question with us let us try to get the solution for this problem so in the solution part I will say that first of all I will explain this with a diagram more clear than this here I would be drawing a 3D diagram this shaft it carries two pulley and the weight of the pulley is same on both the sides their distances are also given in the problem so here I have drawn this diagram to explain it further now as I have see drawn in this diagram 
here this is the shaft which is supported at two ends means at here at this end it would be supported and at this end at the extreme ends this shaft it carries two pulleys as we can see here these are i can say that this is also a pulley and here also we have a pulley so what will happen in this case is that when the shaft is supported between a length of 3 meter and then the weight of the pulley would be acting downward so because of that the shaft is subjected to bending because of the weight of the pulley this shaft will bend because weight will try to pull the shaft in the downward direction so there is bending of the shaft at the same time by the definition of shaft we know that it is a rotating machine element so this shaft is constantly rotating and at the same time when it is rotating it is also subjected to bending because of the weight of the pulley on both the sides so i can see that here this shaft is subjected to both that is it is subjected to twisting torsion because of the rotation and it is subjected to bending that is because of the weight of the pulley so i can say that here the given shaft is subjected to both twisting and bending that is the given shaft is since i'll write down since the given shaft is subjected to both twisting and bending so therefore here the shaft will be designed based on twisting moment and bending moment so while designing this i will consider both twisting and bending now since in this question they have given power they have given rpm so from that we can get the value of torque so i'll say that since power transmitted by shaft is given by power as we know it is p is equal to 2 pi nt upon 60 this is the formula of power next here i can say that therefore torque t will be equal to p into 60 divided by 2 pi n power it is given as 100 into 10 raised to 3 watts into 60 divided by 2 pi into n is 300 that is the speed 300 rpm so from this i will get the value of torque and my answer is it is 3183 newton meter now here we are getting torque in terms of newton meter i'll also write it in terms of newton mm so it is 3183 into 10 raised to 3 newton millimeter after getting the torque now i will go on to find the bending moment because as i have told here that here we would be designing the shaft based on both twisting moment as well as bending moment so twisting moment we have got just now now i'll calculate the bending moment and for that purpose i'll say that since the shaft is supported at a and b so here 
at A we would be getting one reaction called as reaction at A. Here at B also I would be getting one reaction called as RB. Now how to get this RA and RB? See it is very simple. As you look at this beam, it is exactly symmetrical. That is the loading, we can say the reactions, the loads, they are located at same distance from both the sides and even the load value are same. So if the total load, if I add this, that is 1500 and 1500, that gives me 3000 Newton. That 3000 Newton would be shared equally by both the supports. So at each support, I am getting the reaction as 1500 Newton. So after getting RA and RB, now what I can do, I can calculate moment either at this, that is I'll say this is point C, or I can get the moment at this point, which is point D. So next I'll say that, therefore, reactions at each supported end that would be RA is equal to RB and that is 1500 Newton. I can write down since the beam is symmetric. Now after getting this I can say that therefore bending moment at point C, I can calculate either at point C or at point D, both the values would be same. So if I take the moment of this 1500, it would be 1500 into 1 because as we know, moment is force into perpendicular distance. So it is 1500 into 1. So therefore, the bending moment at point C is equal to 1500 Newton into 1 meter. So hence, moment at C is 1500 Newton meter or I can write this as 1500 into 10 raised to 3 Newton millimeters. Now once I know the value of twisting moment and bending moment, I can get the equivalent torque. I can say that therefore equivalent twisting moment is given by the equivalent twisting moment is T equivalent that is equal to square root of T square plus M square that is it is the square root of torque and bending moment making square of that. So finally I will say that therefore T equivalent will be equal to square root of the torque value which I am getting that is I have calculated it using the power and the torque was 3183 Newton meter. So it is 3183 plus bending moment is 1500. So from this I will get equivalent torque and hence T equivalent that comes out to be 3519 Newton meter or it is 3519 into 10 raised to 3 Newton millimeters. So after getting equivalent torque, now I can easily calculate the diameter of shaft. I can say that therefore the equivalent twisting moment is also equal to pi by 16 d cube into tau. Here this formula, I can say that it has come from by strength criteria for shaft design. This formula has come from the strength criteria. Why? Because here we have stress. So now I will go on putting the values. T equivalent is 3519 into 10 raised to 3. I'll put the value in Newton mm so that I get the answer of diameter in terms of mm. It's equal to pi by 16 d cube 
instead of tau I can write the value it is given in the problem as 60 megapascal so it is into 60 so finally d cube will be equal to 3519 into 10 raised to 3 this 16 will go on to one side divided by pi into 60 and from this if I calculate I would be getting the cube of d and if I take the cube root of this answer therefore I will get my answer of capital D as it is 66.8 and since I am getting the answer is 68.8 66.8 I can make that as close to 70 mm so this is my answer and the meaning of this answer is that here we should be using a shaft whose diameter should be equal to 70 mm for the given conditions it means whatever conditions they have given in the problem regarding the pulley and the kind of load the pulley has and then the shaft is subjected to the amount of power and speed they have given for that the diameter of shaft should be 70 mm so i hope this design of shaft is understood in this video